All right, Shalom, Rastafari. We're going to go into the proof that the sons of God, right, the sons of God were the fallen children of Seth. The fallen children of Seth. They fell from their their holy faith. And and there's a very interesting parallel here, you know, saying, in the word to what we also see manifest even in our very time, in these perilous times, in the times of Yaakov's Metkara, in the time of Jacob's trouble, right? The black sheep, the lost black sheep of the Beit Israel. Mm. Now, what you see up here, we, we're still going over this because some say, this. okay, Lich Safari, Ras Safari, Hala at 120. So what? Does it really matter? Some say that certain people are going around quoting Genesis 6 and 3, right? And they say that 6 and 3 has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with God, but it's talking about man in some way. What we'd like to know is in what way is it speaking of man? In what way is it speaking of man according to their opinion or according to their knowledge or study? In what way? Because what we find is it's speaking of the God-man. Right, because the God man Noah, right, the God man Noah, right, Noah for 120 years, he was a preacher of righteousness to that generation. And it says after 120 years that there was none, right, there was none who repented, right, after that preaching of 120 years, that there was none who had repented. In other words, he had not made, right, so called one convert, you understand, or one did not um, repent of their evil way, right? And we find this within a variety of um, sources and resources, our Ethiopic um, holy documents, which are not canonized in the Western or the Gentile Bible. So they consider these works to be interesting and extra biblical and not inspired, so forth and so on, because it's not... It's not accepted by their, um, by their mother church. It's not accepted by um, the Roman Catholic church because they never had it within their um, branch, within their wild branch that was grafted in to this black Judeo-Christian um, tree, you understand, which Ethiopia, you understand, and holy Ethiopia, you understand, because what we're dealing with today is a secular Ethiopia or the careless Ethiopians. Therefore, the word of Zephaniah, chapter the 2, verse 12, where it says, um, And ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. And who is speaking? It is yod heh wow -Hey. it is Yahweh. It is a Gaziari her lotu sabhat right? It is, it is Jah, if you please, who is speaking. So what is his sword? The word tells us that the sword of God is the word of God, which means the truth of God is like a sword. You understand? Know and they will be slain. Slain in what sense? They will be slain in the spirit. Because he says, my spirit should not, should not um, always uh, strive with man. Now, the first thing we had to make clear is what strive means. Because many people have the idea that strive means to, like, fight against in that sense. From our pure language, from the pure language of the Metaf Kedus, we find that that is not the meaning when we go to Orit Zesitret, Mitraf, Mitraf Sedis, Kuter, Shos, Sos. It says that Gziavi Harim Menfese Besolai, Lezilalem Ainorin, Arisu Shiganawinna, Zemenochum Meto Haya Ahmet Yehonalu. Allah. It says that men say, say my spirit that so lie upon man. One can say upon man or one can say even against man. But really in that sense it's, it's like above man, upon man, right? Um, but so lie, but z lie, but za, but za lie, upon this, over that, on this, concerning this, or really that spirit. Let's remember that in Old Testament the spirit operated differently because of a lack of grace, it was upon man. 
right, because of that falling away of Adam who was upon man. In the New Testament, through the second Adam, right, through the second Adam, the Spirit dwells within us. You know what I'm saying? It, it dwells within us. So there's, there's a big difference. It says that His Spirit shall dwell in us. You know what I'm saying? He will be our God and we will be His people. We will be a people of His name. And it says in the Revelation that He will have a new name. And He also says in the prophet that the old name or the name, His name was blasphemed. His name was insulted. You know what I'm saying? And even today in one of the vids, we didn't go into the details of it as of yet, but we touched on it briefly when we were looking at that video series, Age of Deceit. What's very interesting is that we're being given a narrative that the aliens or, the, or, or, or these beings, whatever, are evil beings or, you know, from Hollywood, so forth and so on. And so because we're living in the image of the beast, you know what I'm saying, or because it's society, the world, if you are of the world, See, we are in the world, but not of the world. So we can overstand that. But because they are in the world and they're of the world, they hear hearing, you know what I'm saying, but do not understand. They see seeing, you know what I'm saying, but they do not perceive. Therefore, they are not converted. They, they, they are not able to, to make that transformation from ignorance, you know what I'm saying, to the knowledge of the bane, ha, Elohim. They're not able to make that particular transition. You know what I'm saying? But it's according to their wills. See, if they listen to the King of Kings, he says, make our wills obedient to good influences. You know what I'm saying? And to avoid evil is to show the greatest wisdom. And it's the hymenote, it's the living faith that provides us a living foundation. You know what I'm saying? To go from grace to grace. You know what I'm saying? To go from faith to faith. You know what I'm saying? How did his majesty, how could he be among so many of those, those rulers and so many of them were, were evil people? Some people say, oh, he was down with them. No, they don't understand grace. They don't understand the grace of God, nor do they understand that witness, you know what I'm saying, that witness of God, you know what I'm saying, that witness of his spirit, you know what I'm saying, which will reprove the world and how they were reproved, you know what I'm saying, how the days was, was shortened for the Cheruyan for the elect's sake. Because if it was not short to know that his majesty did not reveal himself or manifest in 1892. Lich Teferi. You At that time, none of the elect, none of us, even as the very elect, you know would be saved. That's, that's the key thing that in everything we're, we're, we're missing. Because we're looking a lot, we're seeing the material, but we're forgetting the spiritual that's in back of the material. You understand? And we're not submitting ourselves to his will, so we're getting confused about these things. We're caught up on the King James Version, which is a basic foundation, but we're not growing. And we're not accepting those who he has sent to us. You understand? Those who he has sent to us. Now, here it says, Men for say, but so lie, Lezalalem, Lezalalem, Ainorin, will not always dwell, will not always abide, will not always be would not always be upon, upon man. You know what I'm saying? Would not always be upon Adam. Would not always be upon that humanity. It doesn't mean strive in the sense that his spirit would not always fight. You know what I'm saying? Now we recognize that Noah, Noah for a period of 120 years, he was a preacher of righteousness. Now, in the New Testament, it kind of alludes to that. Because they had these scriptures, these documents, that once again, at the end of this age, we have now access to. You understand? Because it's, it's very important that we learn the half of the story that wasn't told to us, and we, you know, we um, get our orientation right. Because many of us, though we accept His Majesty, though we accept Rastafari, there's still disorientation based on what we have been told. Like you said, that that um, one you know, have been ill-prepared. So in a sense, we may have been ill-prepared, but it's, the, his, it's his spirit, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's his vibe, it's his irate, you know what I'm saying? And in that proper order of submission in Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying, that allows us to receive all things, the Holy Spirit, that unction, it will teach us all things, you know what I'm saying, that we need to know. And so what we've been taught concerning this um, period of 120, 
is very, very interesting. So some might, from a King James perspective, that opinion that six and three is not speaking of God, you understand, but it's speaking of man, may be somewhat correct in a general sense, you understand, that it's speaking about his spirit, you understand, as the God-man, you understand, would suffer them for 120 years. So how interesting that 12, 21, 2012, or December 21st, 2012, according to the Mayan calendar, it actually agrees with what we have in the Gedla, right, in the Gedla Adam, right, what we have here in the Gedla Adam. And what do we have here in the Gedla Adam? Let us continue to read, right? It says in chapter 21, it says, After this, another company gathered together, and they went to look after their brethren. But they perished as well as they. And so it was, company after company, until only a few of them were left. Then Yared, or Jared, stricken from grief, and his sickness was such that the day of his death grew near. Now, this is interesting because this is, um, this is speaking of how the sons of, of, of Sate, or the sons of Seth, right, came down off of that, off of that mountain. You understand? And they started to um, go to the parties and the clubs and, and get into that um, 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 lifestyle, you understand, with the children of men, or more correctly, the children of Cain, the, the, the one who was a murderer from the beginning. Remember what Christ, he disclosed to us? They said, you know, that their father's Abraham, and he said that if Abraham was your father, you would love me, but you were of your father the devil because he was a murderer from the beginning. Now, who was this first murderer? Well, according to the scripture, the first murderer was Cain, who committed fratricide, brother killing brother. Now, what do we have in today's world? We have brother killing brother, black on black crime, tribalism. You know what I'm We have all the same, and these things are increasing, ever increasing. Even people who dwell together in a relative state of peace and these latter days cannot even stand one another. That's because Satan, the devil who has no power, is casting his thoughts. You understand? All he has power to do is to germinate thoughts. And he's creating these dissensions. He's creating these fra uh, factions, creating these divisions. You understand? But then we learn in the mystery of God that that is necessary too. Because the wicked will be gathered together. So you have to check, well, who do you gather your sin with? You know, so if you don't know the foundation, you might be easily deceived. This is why it says, um, 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 test all spirits, try all spirits, you know, and see whether they are of God or not, because many false prophets are going out there into all the world. You understand? And so what we're dealing with right here is, first of all, trying to see our way out of this false prophecy that has been put down. For example, strive. We learn now that strive means that, well, he will not live forever to live. You understand? Strive. You understand? To live with them forever. You understand? His spirit. Now we find in John's gospel, right, and it was in John, what was it, John chapter 16, we find in John chapter 16 that he said that it's necessary for him to go, you understand, so that the comforter, the at nine, which is much similar to at nine, which in a sense would mean a tutor, or really one who makes one firm, that comfort makes one firm, psychologically speaking. And so like comfort you psychologically, it, 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 it helps you to, to, to cope, to be strong, to be firmed up, not weakened down, not broken down, or we're to exhort one another, to build up one another. You understand? Because we are part of that corporate body. We are a corporate body. You understand? The church even is a corporate body. Another thing we want to point out is the word Seth Bamarinya is the very same word for female or woman. It, it, it is Sate. Sate or Seth, right? Seth in the King James and in the, in, in the modern Hebrew, you understand? According to these Jews, they say Seth with the th sound. You understand? Many sounds they add in because of their particular um, 
ethnic patterns, speech patterns, which are not the ancient biblical. We have the pure language, the royal Amharic, and we have the, the first language, the Ethiopic, to compare that. But being that as it may, um, Sate means woman. So the children of Sate is interesting because they would be the children of the woman, which once again brings us to an earlier prophecy, and that is Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. You understand the, the, the difference between the two seeds. The seed of the who? The seed of the serpent, you understand? And the seed of the woman, there was enmity. You understand? There was enmity. Uh, um, um, uh, there, there, there was enmity between the two seeds, right? And it says that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent seed's head, would bruise their eyes. Right, and that the seed of the serpent would bruise the seed of the woman's heels, would bruise the heels. Now, it's interesting if we understand that verbal hieroglyph. So, take a time to you know meditate that because there's a couple of there's various different perspectives to that depending on whether you're looking at it in the rhema sense. That means the right now sense, we can see that Satan, you understand, in the coming of the king of kings of Edomawi, Haile Selassie, they got their head bruised. But what they did to Ethiopia was bruise Ethiopia's heels. You understand? And this is where this book right here is very interesting. Um, the betrayal of Ethiopia is interesting on that particular aspect as well. So Ethiopia's progress. That's why Kedamawi Haile Shalase, Haile Selassie the first called it Hiwate Na Ye Ethiopia Erinja. My life and Ethiopia's progress. You understand? So the serpent, the creeping coup, we have known as the creeping coup, sought to bruise the what? Bruise the heel, you understand, of the man child. You know what I'm saying? Bruise the heel, bruise the progress. So if we look at Ethiopia the past 30 or 40 years, you know what I'm saying? We can see that that progress has been severely, you understand, hampered. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody hits you on the heel and bruise your heel. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so you can't move as fast or as well or your footing is not as firm. You know what I'm saying? But still, the upper part of the prophecy is that the seed of the woman, and the seed of the woman is that man-child. So we have a couple of correspondences here in the Word, because to prove every word, two or three witnesses. So we have Christ's own word in chapter 16, right, of St. John, of the Johannes Wengel, right? And we have also in um, Ye Johannes Rai, right, in the vision of John or in the vision of John's grace. Johannes, even his name. Remember we teach that the names are very important. If you study, say, the metaphysical Bible and, and the Schofield reference, and you learn the names of the people from a metaphysical perspective in the Bible, it brings the story to an, an applicative level. You know what I'm saying? So you both have, you both have the spiritual aspects, but, to, but then you can perceive and see things in real life on the spiritual, psychological, and the physical or material um, carbon organic so-called um, level of l i c you understand, or of life. Now, so what we have here is the children, the companies of the children of, of, of Seth, you understand, when they came down off of that mountain. Now, in the Bible, it calls them the children of God, or the Bani Ha Elohim, or the Beni Ha Elohim. So here it says that, and then, it says, then he called a Hanok, right? Then Yared called Hanok. Who was Hanok to Yared? It was his eldest son. And Methuselah, Hanok's son. And Lamech, the son of Methuselah. And Noch, Noch, or Noah, the son of Lamech, right? Let's go further. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them and blessed them. And said to them, ye are righteous. Enante Tzadikan, innocent, right, innocent sons, go ye not down from this holy mountain. That's what it means that, the, that when the sons of God, you understand, know saw the daughters of, of, of men. He, now, Jared here is praying for, for the remaining seed, 
and saying that y'all are righteous because y'all have not, in a sense, committed a criminal trespass. In other words, them coming off the mountain and, and fornicating and going to the clubs and the parties and the strip joints and, and, and doing all the activities of the children of Cain, and they were one and the same as these activities we see today. You understand? Um, that they, he said to them, Go ye not down from this holy mountain, for behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this mountain and have estranged themselves. They have become strange to Jah and strange to the righteous way. They have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandments. There's an interesting story that connects with this. It's a real story concerning some of the Ethiopian and East African women that get caught up in this modern um, slavery and sex trade with the Middle East. And there's a movie, Ethiopian sister did this movie, Hewitt, uh, Hewitt in the Waza. And if you look at that particular movie, it talks about how a lot of Ethiopian women looking for better jobs, you know, and opportunities, they go to certain dubious um, um, characters, some, some Iscariot-type Ethiopians, Askarotawi, Aina, Tichopiawi, and those males, you know, like people who are doing, like, um, you know, uh, employment references and everything, get them a good job in, in, in foreign, foreign Arab countries. And what happens, they get promised a lot of stuff, they go over there, and they get their passports taken and end up, you understand, as slaves, as sex slaves, you understand, end up, you understand, getting abused and, 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 and abominated, in other words. You understand? So it's a real thing going on. And I, I really hope and pray that the Rastafari um, woman and the sisterhood would raise a banner, you understand, for that. You understand? Because one can use that activity, that banner in the world to bring the light and illumination of the King of Kings as well as the good works of Kedamawi to Aleta Georgis and Tege Menin, you understand, who also stood for that upliftment, you understand, of the African woman, of the black woman, and of the Ethiopian um, woman. So here Yarid says, So behold, your children, your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandment. Now, in that movie, there's, there's a real-life example of a real woman in that movie who actually, that happened to her. She, she went abroad, and I think she worked with a filmmaker, a sister named Kadis. She worked with a filmmaker to, um, you know, make this particular film. He went in the Waza, and um, she was saying when, they, when she met some of the sisters who, who, who wanted to get out of the Arab um, Islamic kind of like Mohammedan um, um, sexual slavery that they were going through and returned to Ethiopia. One of them couldn't. One of them basically, or not that she couldn't, but she didn't feel that she could. In a sense, I'm thinking about her testimony and thinking about when it says right here that they were estranged from this holy mountain. You understand? Through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandment that many Ethiopians feel even guilty to return to Ethiopia, you understand, um, within that particular um, slave trade, modern slave trade, sexual slavery going on today, and in other ways too. It just gave me kind of a real life kind of a example of how one could even feel that, feel that like, feel like I'm, I feel so guilty, feel so shameful, you understand, that they don't want to return. You understand? And it also connects with not getting the pure teaching of His Majesty and the pure teaching of Christ. You understand? Which through Him and through that, that willingness and obedience of the gospel, He clears us from that. But the devil uses that because the devil has no power. You understand? The only power he has is to germinate a seed. You understand? Playing to our doubt, playing to our unspiritual areas of our heart and mind. You understand? And using that almost using that against ourselves, you understand, because of our ignorance, you understand, or lack of knowledge and application of the way, the truth, and the life, right? Um, but he it, it goes on to say, but I know through the power of God, through the what? The Chayil, the Chayil, through Exiavihar Chayil, that he will not leave you 
on this holy mountain because your children have transgressed his commandment and that of our fathers which we have received Kabbalah Mechabel from them but oh my sons Ha Elohim will take you to a strange land and ye never shall again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain now the connection of Ethiopia are, are so overt and obvious, you know, then um, will is allow that to be a meditation. Therefore, O oh my son, set your heart on your own selves or on your own souls and keep the commandment of God which is with you. And when you go from this holy mountain into a strange land which ye know not, take with you the body of our father Adam. Take with you the body, the embalmed body. This is where ancient Egypt and, and, and um, um, what they call it, pre-dynastic Egypt, gets that particular um, right, you understand, of, 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 of the bodies of the ancestors. Because this, this is how the original um, worship after the, the fall of man, or after the fall of Adam, from the garden was. And with it, these three precious gifts and offerings, namely the gold, the incense, and the myrrh. And let them be in the place where the body of our father Adam shall lay. And to him of you who shall be left, O my sons, shall the word of God come. So it's, it's those who like endure to the end, the word of God will come. And when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Now, this is very interesting, my brothers and sisters, the whole place where salvation shall be wrought. Let's see if we can give you uh, uh, an, an example of this. this. These are some crosses that I and I got from the late Dr. Gladstone um, Robinson. But let's just use one of them as an example. We'll use this one right here. Now, notice this right here. Um, let's get some light on this. Okay, you see this? Right? This is the cross, right? This is the mezcal, right? The processional cross. Now, this part of the cross down here is often called the, um, the, the, the body of Adam. This, this one, this, this box down here, the lower the lower um, square. It's called the body of Adam. And it's interesting because this looks just like um, Lalibela, or Lalibela, Lalibela, um, an Ethiopia, the rock hewn church. But I wanted to point that out that that is called the body of Adam. You know what I'm saying? This is called the body of Adam, and now this is the second Adam. You know what I'm saying? This is Christ. You know what I'm This is Christ. Now the cross is more than just a symbol. Some say because of their understanding, the level of their overstanding or comprehension, that it's just a symbol. You understand that there's no other really meaning in this. You understand? But they miss the mark. You understand? They miss the overstanding. You understand? They have half of the story, but the other half of the story they do not know. So anyway, this is the body of Adam, so you can see how this is very much similar to um, La Labella right there, that square right there. So the body of Adam. I want to point that out to, to, to one and all, you know, so one can understand. And also some would look at this as a key. You know, and this is in a sense a key. Now there's also a celestial or heavenly reference to this particular pattern. And there's a couple of sites out there we pointed to that actually talks on how this matches, you understand, the heavens. You know, the sense. So this knowledge of the heavens was known, but to um, the Gentiles or white supremacy or the education that we've received and humanity has been deceived. You have to understand humanity has been deceived. Revelation reveals the truth. So right here it says, um, it says, uh, and there's a footnote down here as well. You understand to Psalm LXXIV or Psalm uh, 74 um, and 12. So put that down as a reference. Then Noah then Noah said to him, Who is he of us that shall be left? In other words, who, who is the one of us that's going to be left? 
And Yared or Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left. You are the one who will remain. And thou shalt take the body of our father, of Abatachin Adam, or Abuna Adam, from the cave and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes, in the Merkeb, you understand, in the boat, in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, shall, who shall come out of thy loins, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, right, in the middle of the earth. So the question we have to ask, at the proper orientation, the proper position, is Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying, the middle of the earth. Some say today it's the pyramid, you know what I'm saying, where the pyramid is, but we know that's because of the whole shift. Is what is the middle of the earth? Or is it the pyramid that's the middle of the earth? But the connection definitely is with Africa. You understand? It is with our heritage. This is what we need to really be um, conscious of and to study, you understand, and, and show ourselves to prove to Jah as those work men that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing or explaining the word of truth. So in the place where salvation shall come, in the place where salvation shall come, so we know that Yeshua came to both Egypt, you understand? Yeshua also came to Ethiopia, you understand? So we see that connection right there. And some say, well, that one land in itself is the center of the earth, all right? So then Jared turned to his son Enoch, or Hanok, and said to him, Thou, my son, abide in this cave and minister diligently or continually before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life and feed thy people in righteousness and innocence. So, Hanok, Enoch, was to minister diligently before the body of Adam. This is what I found so interesting about studying this and then seeing it in its fullness and then seeing the evidence of ancient Egypt and what they call um, pre-dynastic. This is the link right here with pre-dynastic um, so-called Egypt or the customs. You understand? Know um, and Jared said no more. His hands were loose and his eyes closed and he entered into rest like his fathers. His death took place in the 360th year of Noah. Of Noah. That's interesting. His death took place in the 360 year of Noah. So now let's look at this number right here, the 360 years. So it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end of the age. So we have 360, or the or 360th day. The 360th day. We know that a 360 is what? A 360 is a cipher, is a circle. Or a 360 is a square. You understand? Because um, mathematically, if we do the math, you understand, um, check the facts and we do the math, a square and a circle mathematically is one and the same. See, it's just the shape, the look of it. You understand? You're looking at the look of it, but you, the spirit of it is that they both are 360. You see what I'm saying? So if one say, are they the same? One can say, yes, um, mathematically. You understand? But the way that they appear or inform you know saying they are indifferent in form, but mathematically they are one and the same. Now, that's interesting because that's like the father and the son in that sense. They are one, you understand? But now in the dispensation that they manifest, we see that there is that 2,000 or so years or 2,000 years being cut short. You understand? Know for the whose sake? For the elect sake. You understand? Know for the chosen sake. So it says that... Jairus' death took place in the 360th year of Noah, and in the 989th year of his own life, on the 12th of Tachsus, on a Friday, right, on a Friday. Now, the interesting thing is, too, the Friday is the beginning of the Shabbat day. It's in the Friday, Friday evening. So, really, we can say Friday, or we can say Sabbath Eve. You understand? It was, it was the eve of the Sabbath. 
and interestingly enough, too, this is the same time period that we're looking at again. You know what I'm saying? This is the very same time period that we're looking at it again. So remember, he will show us certain signs. You know what I'm saying? Certain keys, certain clues. Now, this does not say that, okay, this day is the end of the world like a lot of folks have been talking about, but it is a sign of a 360 completion of a certain dispensation. You understand? It's like not to say, well, that day. Remember, the day of the Lord according to the best biblical interpretations that we have seen and that are factually, based on the evidence, provable, the day of the Lord is actually a time period roughly of a year. You understand? A, a year of, of such great devastation and tribulation. Now, all we're seeing is, you know, we're seeing it's the beginning of the end. You know, you know the beginning of the, or the end of the beginning, rather. The end of the beginning and the beginning of the end in this particular time space. We already, you know, see the famine developing, the, this hot weather, the storms, you know, the, the men and people, the degeneration all over of men and people, um, the wars, the bloodshed, the murders, you know, the religious and social and racial and sexual conflicts of all sort of dimensions because this is all part of the germination. These are the germs, right, the, the satanic germs that have been spread. Only the good news, the gospel of his imperial majesty, is the gospel of his imperial majesty that's the true disinfectant. You understand? To all those who receive it. You understand? All those who receive it. But to those who reject it, it is still the judgment. You understand? It's the judgment still remains. Now, it says, but as Jared died, right, as Jared, as Jared died, it says that tears streamed down his face by reason of his great sorrow. Because his name, Yared, in the Hebrew, Wered, Wered, you understand? Wered, um, it's like uh, Jordan, the, the word Yordanos, Yordanos. That river, the river Jordan, is a descender. That's what they call it, Yordanos. Because that, that, that river, it, it, it descends. You understand? Now we have Yared which also means the sin. And then we also have Wered. When you read in the Psalms, it says that how he came down and there was darkness, you know, sin, under, you know, sin, under his feet. Now we know that the, um, the throne, you know, sin, the throne of God is that groundation, it's like the foot, it's the footstool, you know, sin, you know it's, 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 it's the place of his foot, that his foot rests. So there was darkness that was, Underneath now, now with that, um, with that, uh, with that, uh, being, with that being, being said, because of this great sorrow that Jared Yared had, even after he had passed away, tears were still seen streaming forth because of that great sorrow it was in his time that the children of Seth, right, the children of yes, yeah, Sate Lijoch. You understand? Did they transgress? You understand? Did they come down off of the mountain? Did they mingle with the children of men? Now, the children of men had already gotten infected, you understand, by the fallen angels. The book of Enoch will talk about the various different um, um, alien and fallen angel technology, you understand, that was given to them, you understand, to do occultism to, to, to basically make connection with demonic beings in the future, you know, in that time and in the future. But also, moreover, what was being done is, is when they sinned against beasts. You see in so-called mythology, there's a lot of so-called um, um, uh, beasts that don't look anything anatomically like the creatures that we know to be true creatures of God. You understand? Some people say, well, this was their imagination. You understand? But based on the, the Metapha Hanok, it's not, it was not just their imagination. It's like right now they have the same DNA technology. They have the same, um, you know, where the animals, this is where, this is where, where, when we talk about, um, uh, what's that, what's, uh, the Epistle of Romans, when it talks about in Chapter 8, about the animal creation. You understand? 
um, what's happening to the animal creation, you know, the, the torturing of the animal creation. The animal, what was it? The animal they lament, right? And the prophet and the prophets denounce that. Even Christ himself denounced that. What they're doing with the, you know, with the animals. You understand how they're genetically, once again, genetically engineering. You understand beasts and torturing animals and 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 torturing people too. You understand the cruelty. You understand the cruelty, even the cruelty of animal sacrifices. Hallelujah was done away with. You understand in and through Yeshua. You understand in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach. It ended that. It ended that for His people, for Israel. We have to recognize that much of the word speaks to Israel. Although many areas of the scripture ones think they have universal application, the main key application are for the lost found, are for the Beta Israel. It is for I and I. Just like things in the world. When black people do it, you understand? Other people pick up on it. So just imagine and think if black people or if that number were to stand up and do and live righteously and be a true and faithful witness to the King of Kings and his Christ, you understand? Know that itself would become almost like habitual for others. That will help them, you understand? Know because they have obviously a greater weakness. Cause remember, more was given to us. Those who talk about, well, we got melanin and we blacks. Well, to whom more is given, more is required. So if we don't do our part is first. It first came to the Judahites. You know, like the Moan Bessazem Negeda Yehuda first came to the Judahites, to the Ethiopians. You understand? And then that light from the east is shined forward to the west, and thus we have the rise of Rastafari and the rise of various Hebrew movements around that very prophetic time. So here it says that um, tears, tears stream down Yared's face by reason of his great sorrow for the children of Seth who had fallen in his days. They had fallen. Well, how did they fall, fall? Did they fall physically? No. They fell from that righteous, from their righteous position. You understand? They fell from their position. You understand? They fell from, these are the sons of God. These are the Bane Ha Elohim because Adam himself is called the Son of God. That's why it says that the Yeshua, Jesus, right, he is that, quote, second Adam. You understand? He comes to repair and has come and repaired the breach of the first Adam. This is why we have to be born again if we are able to tap into that and have a right, you understand, to that tree. You understand that true tree of life. Then Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, these four, they wept over him. They wept over Yared. They embalmed him carefully. Get that, that link. They embalmed him carefully. This is what the Lephaphatidic, in a sense, is, uh, is, is kind of a remnant of that as well. Because Lephapha means to wrap, the, the bandlet. The, the, the wrapping of righteousness. They, they embalmed him carefully and then laid him in the cave of treasures. Then they rose and mourned for him for 40 days. For 40 days. And when these days of mourning were ended, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, they remained in sorrow of heart because their father had departed from them and they saw him no more, right? They saw him no more. Now, this is very, very interesting because here we get the evidence. Here we have evidence, direct evidence of what happened. Oh, first of all, who are the, the sons of God mentioned? Are they the angels? But Hebrews says, to which of the angels has he said that thou art my son? This day I have begotten thee. You see, so that's a lie when they say, well, they are angels, in the sense of heavenly angels. You understand? They're not heavenly angels, or not the angels who fell, the Nephilim. The Nephilim are the Nephilim. And it's also a, a failure to read and properly, and properly um, divide that word there in the Bible. 
because we've heard so many people speak on that particular verse in the Bible, and they confuse, they don't recognize the semicolon. They don't recognize how it's structured. You understand? It is speaking about when the children, right, of God or the children of Seth, when they came down, that they were already the giants or the Nephilim were already in the earth in those days and time. So then when you look at the book of Hanok or Enoch, which here it says that Enoch, you understand? Enoch, the son of Yahweh, he goes on to fulfill faithfully his father's word. You understand that he ministered, and we know the story of Enoch based on the book of Enoch, especially the Ethiopic book of Enoch as well. And that book, the Metapha Hanok, it gives us further details even names who these ones and ones were. Now that would make perfect sense when you put the story in its proper context. Because if Yahweh was the father and he's the one that had these encounters with Satan and with the Nephilim who were trying to pretend to be Adam and, and, and the patriarchs from before and led, led, led Jared down to the company of the children of Cain, and then later on we have the children of Cain, you know what I'm saying, being seduced. And this document goes into that as well. We didn't read that chapter because we still want to stay on this particular point about the 12th of Toxus. So let's put this up here so we'll have this fully for our notes. The, the December 21st, 2012 equals, right, the 12th, right, of the Ethiopic month of Toxus. Now tell me something. It's very clear that the book of Adam and Eve is Ethiopic. You know, and at least the full testimony we have it in the Ethiopic. So this date is this date. This time here equals the time between the manifestation of the man child, who we know as Kedamawi Hila Shalase or Hila Shalase the first, and this present time, 2012, where they tell us that this is the, what the Mayan calendar said, that the end, right, the end of, 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 of time, some interpret it. Let me say that. They basically don't, cannot go beyond that. The testimony goes up to that period of time. That means that even the Mayan seers could not accurately see beyond a certain period of time. You know, this means to us what? What does this mean to us? Remember his Majesty's speech? And his utterance, when he says, um, the ultimate challenge, where are we to turn to for answers to questions that have never been asked before? This is, this is the, the, the famous, um, um, or well-known to us as Rastafari, and we can even be said, it, it can even be said to be made even a little bit more um, well-known because of um, Robert Nesta Marley where he speaks about, um, to the UN, you know, it's that, it's, that, it's that UN speech that he gives. He says in it, there's a portion of that which talks about the ultimate, the ultimate challenge. And I like to, you know, wrap this one up there, you know, with what we've been saying, because since there seems to be no direct um, continuation that has been um, prophesied in detail, it means that we still have the opportunity. You understand? In other words, it is still about what um, what choices, what choices we individually and we collectively make that will determine. You understand? That will determine our future or our futures. You understand? Our future or our futures is determined by that. So let's get this. Uh, Right here, here we go, the ultimate challenge, all right? This is on page 377 of um, His Imperial Majesty's um, selected speeches, right? Selected speeches from um, 1918 to 1967. He says, when I spoke at Geneva or Geneva in 1936, there was no precedent for a head of state addressing the League of Nations. I am neither the first nor will I be the last head of state to address the United Nations. 
but only I have addressed both the league and this organization in this capacity. The problems which confront us today are equally unprecedented. That means we could see a little bit here, a little bit there in human history, but we're seeing all these things happening now at one time. They have no counterparts in human experience. Men search the pages of history for solutions, for precedents, but there are none. This, then, is the ultimate challenge. Where are we to look for our survival? For the answers to the questions which have never before been posed. We must look first to Almighty God, to El Shaddai, to Hulun Chai Amlak, Hulun Yemichel Amlak, Lamalet. We must look to the Almighty God who has raised man, who has done what? Raised man above the animals and endowed him with intelligence and reason. Now it's interesting that he says raised man. I perceive that Matthew still is speaking. In